All right, so let's go ahead and get started at this 10 o'clock. Um, again, this is Bahman Jalali, DJ. I'm uh, the director of product management in Stonefly. But I have a standard presentation uh, that I will uh, go through that, and uh, uh, I will also have a uh, live system that can log into the system and uh, show you the Stonefly IP stand GUI and uh, how to create volumes and um, any other things. Uh, by the way, this is a very informal presentation. Um, stop me anytime you want. If you have any questions, as far as uh, I mean, any case in the presentation, if you ask, uh, uh, stop me right there and ask ask your question. Uh, uh, so it will be, and I can tailor the presentation to what you guys want to see. So. Uh, don't hesitate to ask questions. Uh, uh, first, before getting it started, that's all of the logistics. Has everybody, uh, does everybody see um, my screen? Or does anybody have any problems uh, seeing screen or he hearing my voice or anything? Okay. All right, so I am. I'm assuming that they uh, finish, uh, so you can see the screen. So I'm going. I'm uh, going to get it started. Uh, this is a short history of the Stonefly. Uh, I don't go through all the bullets, but I, the main point that I wanted to mention is uh, uh, Stonefly has been around uh, since 2000. We've had uh, products released in the field uh, up 2002, so it's, uh, we, we have our products uh, close to more than six years in the field, and they, they've been all uh, running, and we, we have customers that go that far. Uh, even though you might, uh, some of you might not have heard about Stonefly, because uh, we are a relatively small company, uh, it's a private company, and you might not have heard of us, but uh, We've been around for a long time, and uh, Stonefly has been one of the first ones that started in the ice fuzzy field. Uh, I'll go a little bit about the storage evolution, just for uh, those who want to know why uh, we took upon this journey of uh, creating IP sand. Uh, most of you know uh, storage uh, initially started with the direct attached storage. Uh, basically servers connected to a uh, storage uh, using uh, SCSI or uh, different type of interfaces. Then uh, as time uh, uh, passed by, uh, fiber channel SAN evolved, um, which basically uh, the main concept of the SAN is to centralize your storage and be able to uh, share that storage with multiple servers uh, in your facility. So Fiber Channel Sun uh, started uh, growing uh, very rapidly. But uh, pretty soon uh, people figured that the, the, the Fiber Channel Suns are very expensive. And uh, they were very good for uh, uh, large enterprises, but uh, for the small and medium enterprises, they, they were just cost for risk. That's when uh, IP Sun uh, evolved. Uh, IP Sun pretty much is, uh, I mean, you can call it a and on the Ethernet. Uh, it, is, uh, it still provides all the features of the fiber channel fan. Uh, it, uh, it provides a common storage pool for all the servers, but with a much lower cost. Um, so if you look at the direct attached model, if you look at uh, basically the servers, are, they each have their own storage, but they also have some, uh, like if you look at these uh, white uh, blocks, there are three blocks um, that are uh, on attached to each server. The problem with the direct attached storage, I can't share this block with this other server because it's attached to this other guy. So that was the main issue with the direct attached uh, storage, that basically. Then in a fiber channel world, that problem is solved. So you do have a common storage pool that are shared with, this, uh, with the servers. Uh, so that problem is solved, and then uh, fiber channel SAN, uh, they have different speeds, 1, 2, 4, 8, and the, com the most common one right now is uh, 4 gigabit uh, per second. 
the eight gig is new and uh, it's coming up. Uh, the main issue with the fiber channel fan, uh, again, it's, uh, it's the cost. Uh, these switches, uh, they are very expensive. And in the fiber channel world, you always need gates or host bus adapters inside your servers to be able to connect to the server. So there is a piece of hardware that you put into this uh, HPA. It go anywhere from, uh, I don't know, $500 to $1,000. So we are talking about the expensive HPAs and expensive switches that connect to your storage. And then there are some issues about the uh, management. Uh, you always require long zoning and a few other things. In the IP fan environment, which are uh, mainly what um, our products are, uh, we don't have those, uh, I mean, basically the idea is rather than having the expensive fiber channel uh, switches, we are dealing with the regular gigabit Ethernet switches or in the case of a 10 gig switch. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have a 10 gig interface, then you can have a 10 gig switch. These gigabit Ethernet switches are way uh, less expensive than a fiber channel switches. You can go to Fry and basically buy some of these switches for $50. So they are very uh, inexpensive. Uh, at the same time, um, on most of the servers, people are using software initiators. And software initiators, as I'm showing in here, most of these are free. Uh, Microsoft, if you go to Microsoft and search for iSCSI, you can find a Microsoft software initiator. You download it, put it on your server, and that basically replaces the H fiber channel HPA. That is what you use to connect your IP fan. And again, uh, the, uh, the feature of having the terrible pool of the storage, basically having multiple, uh, having this, uh, uh, all these uh, shared storage, you can carve it up and give it to any server you want. So you can have, like for example, this file server has two volumes from this fan. This exchange server has one volume. This SQL server has uh, one volume. And you still have this much free space that you can uh, allocate that to anybody uh, that you want. So that's the basically uh, the concept of the IP plan. So before uh, getting to the next set of the slides, which is actually has a GUI demo, any questions so far as far as the history of storage or uh, any other thing? 